I will show you one of the best coloring methods in digital art, which I'm using a lot in my professional career. Let's dive into it. I usually start with a rough sketch. Of course, it's always better if you can paint in color straight from the beginning and do it correctly. But not everyone, including myself, has the knowledge and confidence to work with color and light right away. In this case, we could use specific pipeline that is easy enough and helps us to achieve decent results. Then I make it semi-transparent and draw it again. But this time I'm refining it while adding more details. I repeat this step until I get the final line art. This step is pretty important. Having finalized drawing decreases the time spent on your painting. You can decide how far you want to push the line art. The more you refine it, less guesswork you will later get and you can focus completely on the color and painting. Next we need to fill the shape of the silhouette. Create a new layer below line art. On this layer outline your drawing and fill it with any color using paint bucket tool. Make sure you don't leave any gaps in the contour, otherwise it won't fill it correctly. You could also use the lasso tool or pen tool if you prefer. This will be the base layer of whatever you are painting. If you have multiple characters or important objects you'd like to render, you have to do the same steps for each of them. Next, create separate fill layers for each material. Use the clipping mask for each layer so that your painting stays within your initial shape. We will use them as a base color for those materials. Now we can focus on the shading. Make a layer filled with white color and enable clipping mask as well. Paint ambient occlusion and cast shadows on this layer. You can separate it in two layers if you wish. This way you will only focus on the shading of the object, making the task much easier for you. I suggest using a small palette of two or three colors while painting the shading. It will force you to stay within specified value range. And don't use black color. Ever. Change the blending mode of your ambient occlusion and shadow to multiply and check how it looks. If it looks too dark, make a color correction for your base colors and shading using levels to get perfect results. And don't forget to modify your palette as well. To make it juicy, tint the shading into slightly warm colors. It already looks quite nice, isn't it? You can add some patterns, textures or hue shifts to your base color without even changing the shading, which is quite useful. Same as before, you have to decide how far you want to push the work using this pipeline. At some point it may become less flexible and merging everything in one layer and painting over it may be a good option. But still, this method allows you to get decent base to work with. To paint highlights, reflections and rim light you can use linear or color dodge. You can also use gradient maps to make juicy rim light. Check how to use gradient maps in my previous tutorial. I explain how to set up it correctly. Oh, and if you wish to change the color or make different version of it, you can simply change the layers with the base color. You can also do same trick with shading as well, or you can even make multiple versions of lighting. It's especially useful for commercial work when the client asks to provide some color variants. Then you can merge everything into one layer and make some minor changes on top. Easy! And to finish this, smash the like button for the algorithm and check my other videos. I have lots of tricks to share with you guys. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful day. See ya!